Some difficult times for Stanley, but nobody said it was going to be easy. This is a fairway he must find. This is going right. Bank may help him. Back you come. And it's finding its way out, not only of the thick rough, but the semi rough as well. As good as a good one, that. Head on the green, John Moore. It's in Adelaide. Three under, so still in with a shout. Awkward. He had his the, on his backswing. The longer grass was. He had to get the putter head through that. And he's got a big putter head on that, so that made all life a bit difficult. Brian Huggard could do with making this one. He didn't birdie the par five twelfth. Bogey the last. Running out of holes. This for a birdie should break a little bit from the right. Yes, going 5-5 five, has five really perhaps taken him out of having a chance to win with the holes. Only four holes left after this. Brother-in-law of Gary Plough, Bobby Verway. Almost getting it right at the 13th. I always find it extremely difficult when you play three days of a championship with the wind in the right direction and then it turned round the other way. You got so used to playing it. Yes, certain types of shot and it's all different. Necklace down, wind, but uphill. <laughs> I think as you say, his longer putting has been very good. It's the, uh, it's the shorter stuff, the field stuff that's been Pretty ordinary. Nice revival today from Bernard Gallagher out in 36. Well, he's managed three birdies in the way home. Currently two under par for his round and just two over for the championship. All the damage done in Bernard's week over the back nine holes in the third round. I expected a better championship from Russell Weir, but it is his first senior tour event. Yes, he did very well to be at two under par through three days, but had four bogeys in a row from the second and more have followed since then. Good effort there at 13. 21 years he's been the club professional over at Cal, which is not too far away from Dunin on Scotland's west coast. Simon Owen continues his way, a mixture of bogey, bogeys and birdies and the odd par. As you can see, one over today. And rarely the, uh, it's a four, four, three fours and a par five to close. And I would think this wouldn't be the easiest putt with the way things have gone the last couple of holes. Usually very good on this length putt, this to save par. And sold a few good ones in his time. Brian Huggett, no doubt about that. He still has a wonderful enthusiasm for the game. I was wondering for a minute why Phil Parkin was with this group now, because I really... <laughs> <laughs> I can never pass up a Welsh... It. Hug it. It's <laughs> the way he says it. I like that. But he might also be there because of Mr Nicholas. heard Nicholas say, stop, stop, is that okay? However good you are and whatever you've won, you still don't like a two and a half footer downhill with a little bit of break. 
This is downhill from Morgan at the 13th, it's a bit longer than that. It will come from his left. Nice four from Bobby Verway. We saw his putt from the back edge of the green. He managed to get in that three and a half footer. So with the green clear, the group behind are just about ready to fire. <laughs> Quite strange, really. Bob Charles is in the bushes on the left with his caddy, Russ. And that's the only place at this distance from the green that they can see the actual putting surface. And once he gets back into the middle of the fairway, which he is now, all he can see is a disc on top of a tall pole in the distance. Wind is freshening a little from the left and into. They won't feel very much down in that valley. They know where it is from, but they have to guess it. Quite a long way back after that tee shot is 190 yards left to go. And the flag today is just about at the most difficult spot other than the top left, which is on the front right now. So he'll have to bring this in from the right if he wants to use the contours, or take it all the way and pitch it on the front left of the green and leave himself an uphill putt. Four iron for Charles. Bob seems to have a wonderful ability to be disgusted with a shot, and yet when you see it land on the green, then it's a, a shot of excellence. <laughs> yes, I think it, it was probably the quality of the strike, and it was one of those that wouldn't have felt very nice, but actually was brought back in on the win. A bit thin, wouldn't have sounded great. The last four holes will be playing easier today than they have all week. Wind off the right. So you've got to make sure you don't run out of fairway on this 15th hole, so Jack not out with the driver. Well, I've been in the lap of the gods now. Holding it up too much into the wind. And that did not look the sort of lie from which you can get enough club on it to get to the green. He's the wrong side, there's a big bunker in the way, so he can't run it up onto the green from there. Oh, would you believe it? Clattered straight into the pen for me and Stanley. And I think in some ways it's done him a favour, at least it's kept the ball on the green. We're in the final round of the Senior British Open from Royal County Down. And Jack Nicholas in some sort of trouble over by the right-hand side of the 50. You can't believe what a good lie this is. It's amazing. I didn't think it possible in this kind of grass to have a lie like this one. Still 211 yards left. And the, just as I'm saying, these last four holes will be playing easier. The wind's just changed slightly. There's a little bit more into them, and it's quite strong right now. This is going to jump out just a little bit. It's a four iron. Came out very soft. cleared that bunker and uh, he won't quite discuss but he'll know from the feel of it on the club face that hasn't got there 18th green Gallagher for a five and that's for a round of 69 in she goes currently in a tie for ninth 
Gallico will earn somewhere around the 12 to 15,000 pound mark. It's been a good week's work for the former professional from the Wentworth Club. Back to the 13th, the final group. Stanley and Charles. Nicholas a couple of holes ahead. And this is one of the more awkward greens. We're putting into the wind, downhill. Probably break a couple of different ways on its run right to left to start with, left to right near the hole. And often a sign of increasing tension is the inability to get a longish putt to the hole. We saw it at the previous hole and it cost him a, a par five. And here he's got now to hold this for a four. It's been the strongest part of his game, I think, too, over these first three and a half days. He's held out beautifully from five and six feet. And something you have to do in a golf course like this, you're not going to hit 18 greens in regulation. <laughs> Well, he's still now, what, five holes he's had out of some 67. 66 that he hasn't had a par or better at, and that means that you're, all your game's got to be in good shape. David Oakley's putt will be for a par. Excuse me, for a five. He actually had a penalty stroke, which I'd conveniently forgotten about. So what happened, Howard? He was in the middle of the fairway in he, one. He was just actually a couple of inches from the fairway, Bruce. Remember, mm. Ian Stanley's ball finished on the fairways, and Dave Leeds just ran through it. And he got a little bit of a flyer, and it went to the right and finished in a gorge bus. He dropped out under one stroke penalty, pitched to here, and this is for the five. It will help Charles with the line. We've also helped David Oakley, that's a good escape. <laughs> yes. This wind really tricked all three of these players, all coming up way short of the 15th. When they're on the tee, the wind was off the right and helping, and then for the second shot, it was really strong off the right and into the face. Still 60 yards left for Jack's third shot to this par 14th hole. sound there you could hear how firm the ground was almost like hitting a drum and uh, actually got a bit of spin on it which would have surprised him and goes the part of Bob Charles and we really do have a championship on here in Northern Ireland another way again rather as he hit the pattern he stood up he felt it was the movement of a man who thing had gone off of it in his hands See just how imperative it is that Nicholas makes that par at the 15th. You get the feeling if he takes five there, there's not enough holes and too much to do. This is a nasty little putt that Ian Stanley has left. It will swing from the left but how much depends on how hard he wants to hit it. A real breeze down here, but it starts to flap his trousers, so maybe it is affecting the ball. What a very good putt. As much under the circumstances as anything else. And after the fact he missed one, it was a bit longer than that on the last hole. You know, we talk about the importance of putting three putts on the last admittedly from just off the edge of the green if he has another three there he has six putts for the two holes Charles has two and at a crucial point well there's the flag at 14 let's have a look at it from the air it's slightly downhill it's 203 yards on the card they're not playing exactly off the back tee and in a sense I say with the wind across from the left hand side and almost into their faces it's an easier shot for these players it may be a couple of clubs more but everything breaks from right to left and today with the wind helping up I think they wouldn't uh, have been able to put the pin even there on uh, the first three days because you couldn't have got close to it but the wind has changed the character 
Their way, Morgan and Russell Weir, all threes on this par three, so no change in their score. Weir at plus four, two under for Morgan, one under for the 1991 champion, Bobby Verway. Fifteenth, you'll see over on the right side, you change directions and go back towards the mountains of Moor. Nineteen ninety-five. This says there's not much change in the swing of Bob Charles. It was the eleventh, the par three at Royal Port Rush. A six iron sent from the elevated tee down to the green below and straight into the back of the cup. Charles would tie second with Oakley that year. Three shots behind the winner, Brian Barnes. where it is now it's probably easier for a left-hander to play this shot than a right-hander you're holding it up into the wind which is always easier to do in a fade rather than a draw oh, it seems to me Bob it's got to be helping down wind appears at the tee to be helping the player slightly but I don't think it's helping that much at all yeah it's probably the easiest flag position to get close to of the week. Yardage today is just a fraction over its suggested yardage. And it's playing at 207. It's going like this and it's a little undecided. Just about ready to go, but then so again is Nicholas at the 15th. It's a par putt. Come on, okay. Come on, okay. Oh, he hasn't hit it. He hasn't hit it. So sorry, thought so much about the line, which he got right. Here <coughs> again, one of those middle distance putts that. Really, to hold a fair number of them, they need to be running more firmly at the hole and trying to die them in last gasp. Charles eventually ready. Oh, yeah. Bounce. Hell of sprinkler here. I think Howard Clark read that beautifully. We were talking about the wind helping them. He didn't think so. Obviously, walking along the top of the, the hill there at the 13th, he would know exactly what direction the wind's coming from. Nothing wrong with the shot, it was right on line. Bob, Char Ch Bob Charles chose the six iron, and Stanley's got the second club. That's what I'm saying, when you've had three days where the first bounce has been so fiery and they've been trying to land them where these balls have finished, all of a sudden now, it's held up. What a championship. Six under for Charles and Stanley. They're now three clear of the rest. It's a gorgeous evening for golf here at Royal County Down. You see just how calm the sea is there. It's been a hot and humid day. And it's been hot and spectacular golf we've had in the fourth and final round of the Senior British Open. There's the sleeve Don Artetel, nestling nicely by the edge of the bay. Let's wander out to the 16th where we'll find Jack Nicholas. You see 276 yards, but the wind is more into your face now. He's got to carry it 240 to get over the ridge. And if he can do that, it'll get on the green. But he can't. This has been downwind more or less and off the left the first three days. Much bigger proposition. Won't be too bad there, I would think, because we saw it bounce. But he'll be up under the ridge and restricted view for his second. All three players short at the 14th. First to go Ian Stanley. Difficult chip and run for Stanley. Definitely a misjudgment of club from all three players here. So hard work to make threes. I'm 
Considering he was the first to go, that was a great shot because the others will learn a little bit. And above all, he's left himself an uphill putt. relatively few scores under par. It's all credit to these three leaders and one or two close behind. They're two and three under, respectively. Stanley two under, Bob Charles three under. Nicholas a couple under. David Oakley will help Bob Charles again. He will be putting from a very similar line. Distance is just about the same. So Bob getting quite a bit of help, whereas Stanley has led the way with his chip. David Oakley will be putting this one. Probably a couple of feet or so to the right, all uphill. The trouble is if he puts like that, he doesn't help Bob Charles very much. Makes him think it's rather difficult. I'm amazed that ball's not marked at the 15th from Bobby Verway. Oh, that's why it's way short of the green. It looked as if it was sitting on the edge of the green there. And it just shows you the changes. You couldn't throw the ball onto the screen with anything over the first three days. And now you can play it right over the top of the pin. To 14 once again. Charles not on the putting surface, so he can leave the pin in. And, uh, all in all, a nicely judged pace. Pin 24 on, so he had a thick end of 75 feet there. And of the two of them who have the lead, it's uh, honours even. Bob Charles perhaps the shorter of the two putts, but probably the harder of the two in terms of the line. Chris, who have travelled all over the United States playing on the PGA Seniors Tour. And he's had some good performances, John. He's been so close to winning, hasn't quite managed to do that. Found himself a nice bench in Thuff. Second to Brown Huggett at 16. He too, like Nicholas, took five at 15. That's why he's back to level par. And a shot very similar to the one I think Nicholas will have. Pressure on again for Stanley. These putts are going to be very wearing on the mind, but he's done so well so far. Yeah, mate. I must say, he does hold out beautifully, and they're going at just the right pace, too. It's been a great year for him so far, winning the PGA Seniors Championship. No chance of seeing the pin, but he's judged it to perfection. And maybe that little five will be eradicated. Back to 14. No change. He doesn't fill me with a, a great amount of confidence, Bob Charles. He has over the last 35 years, but somehow there's a, a little raggedness in that padding stroke. You get the feeling he's fighting it. It's not coming naturally to him. But it's a lovely round of golf. No drop shots and three birdies. Both players remain at six under. To the 15th and Morgan for a par. I think if he's to have any chance, or he's two under, he's got to keep this intact. Maybe make a 
three at the next and a four at the 18th. He's done the first bit. Great putt. And of course, for the seniors over in uh, Europe, big prize money this week, equal with the tournament in Wales earlier in the year. Well, in bygone years, the 15th has been the hardest hole on this course, and the reason is the wind has been into your face. It's 450 yards. And you can see a little cairn there is a marker in the middle of a little piece of stone, a bit of granite, and that's your line to get it up and get over on the left-hand side. Then you can get a fairly good look at the green. This big bunker obscures your view from the right-hand side. The green itself is not that big. It falls off quite sharply both right and left and actually slopes a little bit down towards the back of the green from front to back. No problems gauging where the wind is here. Hard and from the right. And this is going to the left now. This could be a big trouble for Charles. Well, having said that it was a, an easier tee shot for a left-hander at 14, certainly it's, it's harder if the wind's off the right-hand side. It's 15. These are the only players under par. Three wood for Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> Ideal. Gary Player has been in sand, he's been in deep rough up the 18th and now his sixth shot at the par five. It's a great pity, it's a horrible way to end the championship, one that he's graced for so many years. Won it in 1988, that was when it was over at Turnbury. Won again two years later over the same course. Also won at Royal Port Rush four years ago in a playoff against John Bland. Bland has part the 17th, he's at plus three. So many people around this 16th green, I think they'll go crazy if Jack knocks this in for a birdie. It'll move a little bit to the right. Been the story of his week. Don't think I've ever seen Nicholas miss so many middle distance pats. chance of winning. Up to the 18th for Gary Plough finishing off. Successful conversion but a rather ugly seven to finish the championship. Home in 38. We could have done without the 8th and the 18th. So, one of the great champions, one of five holders of golf's Grand Slam, parts the scene for this year. And Bob Charles has 
Howard was telling us in a little bit of trouble. What's the, the story, Howard, now you've had a chance to have a look? Well, it isn't good, I'm afraid, Bruce. He's got a very average lie. I think the most difficult thing is that he's so far back. He's 215 yards from the flag. The flag today is just 15 on, but so that leaves him 200 to the front. But it isn't the kind of lie that he can really attack. Looking at the overall picture there, it's not an easy layup either. This doesn't come as any great surprise, <laughs> and I've. <laughs> no. If you were watching yesterday, he hit his ball with the three wood into the pond, which is at about 260 yards from this tee. Perfectly placed in the middle of the ferry, as he was back in 1978 at the home of golf. Same caddy, same talents, and in the end, it was the same result. Little chip and run. The big change came over at the 16th, with Nicholas one behind, Simon Owen from New Zealand took a five, Nicholas made a three. Still Owen had a chance at the last, but not for long. Two putts from the back of the green, and the third open was in the hands of Jack William Nicholas. Of course, after that, there was many more golden moments left. And there still is. Yeah, maybe not this year. And interesting, of course, Simon Owen, he's playing with him today. He played with him the first two days. So, memories revisited. I think the boys on the regular tour will be looking and seeing how long some of the players are taking for these shots and they'll be saying, well, why, why are they not imposing the rules that they put onto them because Charles is taking quite a long time to play some of his shots this afternoon. That's why they've dropped behind. I know it's a difficult shot, it's a very difficult layup, but it's not a difficult lie, not as difficult as it could have been. It's going to be a difficult one now, though. It does too. He got a lot of grass there before he reached the back of the ball. A bit of encouragement from Ian Stanley. Well, he's in the lap of the gods, whether he can now get it on the green out of there. Some very rough country down. John Morgan was down there earlier in the week. David Oakley with a perfect lie, 205 yards to go. Three iron for David. <laughs> that little gully's had a tremendous amount of tension this week. It's not a bad place to be. You're much better there than over the other side where the grass is much longer and the, the gully that much deeper. Good time for Stanley to find the green in regulation. your head up. There's a little bank over on the right side. It's tumbling towards the crest of it. That's fine. It's been an expensive hole, the 18th for John Bland. Six on days one and two. This is his fifth shot. It's a beauty. And the best he can hope for now is a six. Second, the last three times he's teed up in this championship. And at the halfway stage, it looked like he had one hand on the trophy, but it slipped from his grasp once again. And it's now in the hands of Charles and Stanley. 
Howard, I can see at the top of the bank there. What's the story this time? A bit better than the first time round? No, it's getting worse, I'm afraid, yeah, and he's got a really poor lie now and quite a long distance. I haven't had time to find out how far he's actually to go, but he's some 20 or so paces short of the white spot, and that's 78 to the, to the front. So 98 the front, I make it, and another 15 on, so 113 yards. Very heavy lie. A few moments ago at the 17th after a good tee shot, the second of John Morgan. 16, I beg your pardon. Left that deliberately a long way back to be able to fly it onto the green and get some spin. And we saw Bernard Gallagher do that yesterday, I think it was. Left it way back, further back, and so they can hit it hard enough to control the ball. This, I promise you, is the 17th. I get second. The second shot of Brian Huggett, 153 yards. Oh, well, when you get a change of direction that much from the ground, it takes a bit of pace off it. But that's a good result. That was pitched on the back of a bunker. Good camera position, that is. You've got him down there. Gives you a very good idea of the gully in which he's in. So Bob has chosen the wedge for this shot. Off an uphill lie, so that will help him. But whether he can actually get the distance with this stiff breeze against him, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a difficult call, this one. It's very difficult to, in, as well to actually keep his balance. Quite a sandy area. He's managed the latter. And he's also managed the former too. Fine recovery shot. Just the way Howard was going in there and finding the ball, trying to get them to hurry along. May have a plane to catch for all we know. <laughs> This man will be taking his own home. What a great championship it's been for everyone to come here and see Jack Nicklaus. It's the first time he's played in the Senior British Open. And like every championship he's played in around the world, he's given it his very best shot. It looks like he may come up just a fraction light. Two-way tie at the top. Who will it be, Charles or Stanley? No need for the lighthouse yet, but there may be a little later on if we get a hard coming in off the ocean. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Look at that sky. It's got every single colour in it. Big battle going on out at the 15th. Ian Stanley just off the right edge of the, the green. He's there in two. Charles on the front of the green in three, and both of them tied at six under. Yeah. Well, he's been short. A couple of approach shots, but he's got over that now, and that should turn itself into a four, a par. Charles, of course, likely to drop one and therefore drop one behind. Brian Huggett has made his par 17, so no change. Huggett stays at even. I've been with Nicholas for three days out of the four, and you can't believe how many birdie chances he's had at this distance and missed them. Just break a little bit to the left. Such a short backswing. And once again, three times in the last four holes, he's left a reasonable putt short. I don't know about you, Bruce. I felt if he'd knocked that in and made a four up the last, he still had a chance. I think that's right, and I think had he knocked it in, he might very well have made a four up the last on the lifted by it. Get in, get in, get in. Get in. Two wonderful putts from Stanley and Charles. Both had a chance.
Corbin for a three at 16. Well, he missed it the same side as Nicholas. But neither of them were very good putts and both knew they'd missed it the moment they hit it. I guess after the tee shot, that's probably the best he could have hoped for. But a chance now for Stanley to go back in front once again, all on his own. Yes, that's the first mistake of the day for Bob Charles. He'd sort of worn his way to the top by consistent play. Once again, we have an outright leader. Interesting to see what happens now at this drivable 16th. You get the feeling both have got the power to reach it. Well, that's right, and it's a, a little teaser. I love short par fours, and this is one. And do you lay back like uh, John Morgan did, or do you go for it? It's 240 to carry on the left-hand side. I think it's probably too much of a carry in this one to get over the bank on the right. Oh, he's tugged that. There's a bunker, be short of it. Hmm. A little bit awkward that'll be. Well, the great man's come to the final hole. 528 yards, breeze off the right and slightly into. Looks like he's winding up for a big tee shot here. Fairway Charles at 16. He has carried that bank on the right, too. This is going to thunder its way through the green. Looks like there's quite a lot of grass between the a couple of inches back of the ball and the ball itself. It's on a down slope, so he'll have a steep angle of attack anyway. Might be okay. That was a big carry. Three wood for Huggett at the last. Brian Huggett's first tournament victory on the European Tour 39 years ago this week, and it was the Dutch Open. Well, he's got away with something there. He's cleared the he's cleared the bunker, so he can still perhaps get up in three. This is bland for a six. Well, he was 68, 69 the first two days. And with a seven there, that's a pair of 76s over the weekend. John, who lives down by George near Fancourt, where we'll be in just over a year's time for the President's Cup. The Lynx course designed by Gary Player that's cost 95 million rand to put together. That's something around nine million pounds. 18th tee, Simon Owen. Taking the safe route. <laughs> 24 bunkers on this hole, right and left, all the way up, and the fairway just gets narrower and narrower the closer to the green you get. View from behind the 17th green and the pin perhaps in its easiest position today. It's 13 on and slap bang in the centre of the green. <clears throat> 78 for Isao Aoki today. Looks like Bobby Verwey has laid quite a long way back here. There's two bunkers down the right-hand side, and you can choose to take them out of play. But if you do that, you leave yourself a shot of around 200 yards. 
John Faree, the champion there of 1992 going through. Sergio's dad not quite so good today. I think that was something other than a forward. I think that was one of those little speciality ones, and, and he was on a, a six or a seven. <coughs> a little baffy or something mm. like that, but he got a helping hand from the collar of Ruff there. <laughs> Mike Miller just going through his first season in the first tournament of the senior career of Willie Mill, who was pro up at Skibo Castle in Carnoustie over the last 10 years. Fine 70 from Eddie Polland, who lost the playoff three years ago to Brian Huggett. John Morgan has a superb record in this championship. He's been so close on so many occasions. What he would do for a 3-4 finish. Pin's been almost in the same position all four days. It's uh, a small green with severe slopes in it. There are not that many pin positions. We'll go back to where the story of who wins and who doesn't is unfolding at the 16th. And probably two stories of luck or bad luck here. Ian Stanley, I thought, was very fortunate with his tee shot to finish here. Just under 40 yards to go, but a clean lie. Every chance of using the contours, and this looks good. Looks very good. And a look in and the way by great imagination, feel, and touch. Fair amount of talent as well. It's given Charles something to think about. Yes, this is it. Just running there for a minute might have hit the stick. And I think a great blow because there is an element of match play. We always get to this point. There are enough scoreboards around the course to know what's going for them to know what's going on. And that's a quite a, a powerful thrust. And with the way he's been batting, Charles will know that a three is about to follow. Oh, and there's the bad luck. Yes, that's what I was talking about, Bruce. It really has been very unfortunate. Although there is out of bounds quite close to the back of this green, there wasn't any danger of Bob Charles's ball going out of bounds. But what a poor lie. It actually probably would be worse for a right-hander because he'd have to play around that huge tuft of grass. So he might just be able to get the blade behind the ball. But it's made even more difficult now with that second shot of Ian Stanley's. That was a beauty. Yes, as I was saying, I think the only good thing about that is it's <clears throat> the thick tuft of rough is in front of the ball. And so he's got a, a relatively clear passage into the back of it. Correction, I thought the camera was the other side, I must admit. Well, all in all, I think it's a very good result. Part of enormous pressure to follow. Two hundred and sixty yards left to the flag for Jack. Thought he'd get the wood out, but maybe he's trying to chase it on with a low one iron. Have to draw it in with this club. He's got the draw on it, but he didn't start it exactly where he wanted. And it will be over to the left of your screen. 
caught up somewhere in amongst there. That was what he had in mind because he was, that way he could have run it up the gully of fairway. <clears throat> South African at 17. Level par, it's not a bad score on a rather difficult day that many have stumbled. Boy, boy. Another big putt, and they're getting bigger as the holes run out. This should move from Charles's left to the right. Quite a steep sloping green, but Beautiful surface. Wonder if that putting stroke will just lengthen the fraction. It got shorter on that last green, which is looking like a bit edgy. And that indeed was short. Well, that's a five. And for all the world, it's liable to be a two shot swing. That's a four. Morgan at the 17th. That's one I want to forget quickly. That was never on the high side. Back to 16, Stanley, to take a two shot lead to the 17th tee. It's never over until you finish that 18th. There's so many <laughs> dangers there. How many bunkers were you saying it has on it? 24. <laughs> More sand than grass, eh? And both sides, they just, it's uh, very daunting. David Oakley putting out there. He's at six over today. It's been a, a costly, a disappointing day. A man who's done well in this championship before. But he's by no means the worst. So two to go. Yes, there'd be a lot to think about, particularly if Bob Charles got one back here. A couple of obstacles that Stanley must avoid. Two bunkers on the right. Very heavy rough there as well. And the water straight in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> just over 250 yards to reach the water so that's why the iron comes out for most players anything just left of center should feed back to the center of the fairway and with the breeze off the right it's a straightforward three iron for Ian Stanley yeah. surely not I find that hard to believe. I don't think he even knows it's happened. That got a tremendous shoot forward. Off the uh, top of the ridge. He'll get some shock, Bruce, when he comes over the brow of the hill. He will. We've seen wooden clubs hit in there, as Howard was saying, just over 250 yards. And normally it's the two bunkers on the right-hand side that the players are most conscious of. But we've seen players, Nicholas included, in here. And his ball pitched right back there. Hard spot, shot forward and in there. And, uh, well, it seems a strange thing to do to go in. But with an iron club in hand, three iron in hand, and not the wind by no means directly behind, that was a bad break. Well, now, hang on. Is that a little ball? that's come up short, it seemed, that was the line of it certainly, and it seemed to run in, he may have got away with it. I just wonder if that's actually hit the stake because it was right on line with the stake and it seemed to have enough power. Charles going down the right-hand side, 
And the only good thing about that is he's managed to avoid the two bunkers. on the cards for David Oakley not to have a, a great tournament this week. He's played nine events and is way down the order of merit. So perhaps he hadn't been ex up amongst the, the gods in earlier tournaments and not really prepared for it. Pretty good chip from Jack Nicholas from the Heather and the Bracken wins the gorse over on the left hand side. And it's not going to be Jack's year, but it might well be Ian Stanley's because he's managed to stay short of the pond at the 17th. And at the moment he enjoys a two shot lead. We're in the closing stages of the 2001 Senior British Open Championship from Royal County Down and much drama at the 17th. We'll hear about Ian Stanley's in a second or two. First of all, it's the approach of Bob Charles. And in his position, you've got to be able to put the thoughts from your mind that your opponent's been really lucky and do something like the same. A wonderful shot from Ruff. Had to pitch it 20, 30 yards short of the green, up to the 18th. Brown hug its fourth shot, fifth shot, correction. And he was just over a bunker with his tee shot, packed his way up. <laughs> He's got the legs, not quite, but it's a lovely shot. It's cut. Turned that hole from a seven into a six, certainly. Ian Stanley moving the, the yellow post, which he's quite able to do under no penalty. It's only the, the line that he mustn't touch with the club. 100. Very fortunate break, and I'm sure he'll like to, he'd like to see that on video if he, if he caught it, but he doesn't realise it yet that the ball actually hit the yellow stake and saved it from going into the hazard. So he may want to put that in the golf bag. It's left him a very simple shot with a wedge, 113 yards. Well, oh, wow, that's an amazing stroke of luck, and it's what we predicted when we saw the ball eventually on dry land because it was running in there at such a rate of knots, and just as well because it had enough power then to come back onto the level. But sometimes your name is on the trophy, sometimes it isn't. But that's a, a massive break of fortune for the Australian. No doubt about that. No doubt. And he knows it. And he, I saw him in the break, he was being told that's what happened. We'll go to 18, Nicholas. And do whatever he can to finish with a four. So he got the speed this time. He has, but not quite the line. He's hit so many quality iron shots, Nicholas. And the competitive juices are all still there. The desire is still there, too. And at 62 years of age, I'm sure there's one or two wins left in the great man. And he's left his mark at Royal County Down, the first senior British Open he's played in. A three-under par tally after a final round of 69. May he come back on many more occasions. Par for Nicholas and a par for Simon Owen, whom he beat all those years ago, 31 years ago, 21 years ago, and three years ago. And the 73 is no disgrace on a, a blustery day in South Down. 
to 1969 in the Ryder Cup and Huggett thinking he'd hold the putt to win and Nicholas conceding the putt to Tony Jacklin to ensure the match ended in a tie. A great sportsmanship both of these two fine professionals have shown throughout their golfing career. late afternoon sunlight at the top of the mountain there. And at the foothills, Charles Shirley needing to hold this if he's to hang on to the hope of winning the title. Which he's done. A three for Charles, all credit to him. And for the moment, at least, he's back within one. Normally, we say that on most 18 holes, if you are one behind, it's a bit tough. If you're two behind, it's really too much to catch up. But you're right, this 18th hole, all sorts of things can, can happen and have happened during the week. He said he's been struggling with his putter over the last 12 months or so. Feels his long game is in as good shape as always. And here, trying to will the ball into the hole, trying to stare it into the back of the cup. And then the realisation that it's a three and he still has an opportunity. Great stuff. Double breaker for Stanley down the hill, right to left to start with, and then may just break a fraction from the left within the last couple of feet. Actually downhill for most of it, and then back at the hole, it goes uphill slightly. The low camera showed that to perfection. His lead is still intact, but just the one. But he'll be more than happy with the four. And with all the bogeys, double bogeys, triples and others, to have only had five holes in 71 that have not been par or better. It's a measure of how well he's played. David Oakley making the best of his way in. Two doubles going out, out in 40 against the power of 35 was the main undoing of him. So one hole to go, one shot in it. And undoubtedly now, unquestionably now, between these two. Grand trophy and a familiar shape too. And for all of these players, it's it's not just about the money you make as trying to be a professional golfer, it's the titles you're after. Morgan's third at the 18th, having parred the 17th. The important thing there, getting the distance right. Now, if John can knock that in, he'll tie Nicholas for third. And now only four players under par, of which he has won. from a long way out and clearly doesn't like chipping I know the feeling two nice powerful hits though almost got his second mm -hmm. shot on the green there well again the turnaround of the wind it's not helping that much but it is 
it's the fact it's off the right hand side and you can bring the ball in from the right and it's a bit of a dog leg particularly up near the green so it can be reached in two but I would think well, well, Charles he shows some quite good length at times that tee shot at 16 shows he can fly it pretty well through the air when he wants to Just to decide on the, the club selection here. That was a surprising one for Bob Charles. I've talk, talked about all these bunkers and the hazards. Let's take a, a quick look at this. Most of the troubles up the right, but a couple on the left-hand side. And there it looks wide enough, but it's not that wide. And then you hit your second through the gully. You can't really see beyond those bunkers to the landing area for your second. This is classic match play golf now because Charles with the honour and he's got a good bound forward there. Got every single inch out of that. All the pressure back on Stanley. Earlier in the week they were trying to feather their second shot through that gully. That's well over 300 yards that tee shot. Not being muscled into hitting the driver. Stanley with the iron. This is down the fairway. Test too hard, right down the centre, almost in the centre cup. What more could we have asked for? The 72nd hole, Stanley by one, and Charles Miles down the fairway. A glorious evening for a great climax to a fine championship. I've been here for four days at Royal County Down. A couple of matches still left out on the golf course. Championship to be decided. First of all, it's for away. For a birdie, four at the last. Not to be. And still Morgan to putt, but not worrying about that. Ian Stanley, another iron shot. His attitude is, if I'm going to, if Bob Charles makes a four, well, good luck to him. I'm going to make certain I don't take more than five and lose it. Perfect position from the Australian, right in the centre of the fairway, far enough back to get some control of the ball. Rather like the third of John Morgan, which finished some 15 feet away. This is to tie Jack Nicholas for third. on he's made it and what a grandstand finish from John Morgan a lovely round of 70 and it's going to be a check for over 26,000 pounds steady performance over the final round one drop shot on the way out only one drop shot coming home and Morgan and Nicholas in the clubhouse at three under par Any of those ladies and gentlemen have been in those seats for a long time to see the denouement of this championship. Next up, David Oakley. Always a little difficult when the two protagonists are there and you're sort of making up the numbers a bit at this stage to concentrate and not rush. But uh, you don't often take a divot that much with a fairway wood. It's bounding on. And there's the green. And what it does show you is that it's well within range of Bob Charles. Just to tidy up Russell, we're at six at the last, I'm afraid. 79 plus six for Russell and Bobby Verway hold that little putt for a round of 72. He finishes on a level par, which is good enough to be in fifth position all on his own. Brian Huggett and Simon Owen will finish sixth. Bernard Gallagher in eighth place and Noel Ratcliffe, Barry Vivian, Dave Stockton and at the moment this man are tied in ninth. Now let's get down to the fairway and find out from Howard just how far the drive was as Bruce says over 300 and, and I've not a word from here Howard. The first part of the question is quite simple it was 306 yards Ewan it's left him 210 to the front 232 to the flag. Now then iron or wood 
He's gone for the irons, and it will be the longest of the irons, I would think. At the moment, I can't see exactly which one it is. Howard, being a, a left-hander, much easier to fade this ball around the corner than a right-hander, of course, would have to draw it. Yes, it's probably a, an easier shot for Bob to play. The lie of the land is pretty good as well. It's just about as flat a lie as you can see. And this is a three iron. He looked almost draw that in. He didn't want to able to use the wind, and of course, pitching there, bad bounce, a stopping bounce, a, a bounce to the right, and that's a very awkward chip. That said, he's got a bit of room to manoeuvre, a bit of green to work with. But certainly, Stan will, Stanley will be of a mind that his a principal opponent could get down in two. I think he's hit his second one up nicely. It's ended on a nice bit of green grass, Stanley. He himself now has perfectly valid ambitions to get, take no more than two to get down, and that should be that. I think he'd made up his mind on the tee exactly how long the third shot would be, and that was the secret of it. And it depends whether you want a, a three-quarter shot, a half shot, or a full one. It depends which one you're more comfortable with. And it's all come down to these two players, despite valiant efforts from Jack Nicholas and John Morgan. Only four players under par at the end of the championship. Maybe 112 years old, this course, but it stood the test of time. Yes, it's up there on the leaderboard. It's been a marvellous, uh, provided a marvellous test. A perfect lie. Breeze from the left slightly, helping, 94 yards, and this is a sand wedge. It's just about the perfect distance for Stanley. Yes, it took a couple more hops before it got on the ground and checked, so more likely to be a five than a four. But under the circumstances, you can't criticise. Both players will have a wait before David Oakley has his shot in there. And as they begin to welcome maybe the champion into the arena, Bob Charles will have something to say about that, I'm sure. And that's just how tight it is. Open champion of 1963, back at Royal Lytham. And he returned to Royal Lytham 30 years on to take this championship, having won it four years previously at Turnbury. I'd say this is Bob Charles. I think the short game skills are there to get this within holdable distance, but whether the putting stroke will stand up. But one always suspects of the great players that when the moment does come, they've got it in them. Keller has been kept quite well back. David Oakley's quite a bit in front of them. It's been a tough day for him. He never really got going today, David. Double bogey at the fourth, another at the ninth, that and 14. From there, you're chasing everything. an interesting choice of club for Bob Charles. He could putt it, but he's bringing the huge bank in front of him into play. 
And I think he would rather pitch it onto the putting surface. At least he knows what the, the ball should do. It's quite a tight lie, very bare underneath the ball, so it's firm. It's not one for the faint-hearted, this one. Just around 25 yards from the flag. And again, a surprising choice of putter. First 25 feet of this is critical. Store if you don't fancy it. This is the one club you can be sure of getting it on the green. Plus six feet, it ran beautifully. It's so easy for the ball to pop up and you get all the sting out of it. He wouldn't have wanted to have knocked it past the hole anyway. He's left himself with an uphill putt. There's an element of doubt for that of his nearest challenger. David Oakley must be wondering why he hasn't put it out already and get out of the way because this is really quite a nervous situation for him as well but he'll have to wait now. Stanley's golf ball barely hanging onto the back of this green. It's a little slope and he just stopped it in time and in my estimation the ball will break a fraction from left to right to start with and then over the top of the hill it will break right to left and be very quick at the hole. Too firm, and now look what's that. Oakley will get his chance to remove himself from this eighteenth green. shame it's been a good championship but just the last couple of rounds have hurt him badly started the day at three under he's now three over up the hill for David not too much movement if anything left edge but not outside it Parts the scene with a round of 77. And like the rest of us will, I suppose, be quite interested to see the outcome of the next couple of minutes. Charles first to go. He's just marginally further away than Stanley. And it will break from right to left. I think the interesting thing here is to see how long the backswing is. I wonder if natural instincts of winning will take over for Sir Bob. Well, in their own, in terms of the championship, they're like as they lie. And pure match, they get this in and it makes it so much harder for your opponent. Can't fault the quality of the tee shot. Oh, Bob Charles there at the 18th. That was hardly wider than 13 paces where he hit that shot. Fringes of the green with a second. Stanley has another life. Just about the straightest putt you could hope for. But under these circumstances, who knows?
<clears throat> was read by Howard, but not by Ian. It never moved a muscle. And Charles has another life. And then the sixth hole in 72 that he hasn't had par or better. How irritating. He'd done everything right. And then it goes. And a birdie at the 71st and a par at the last means that we have extra holes at Royal County Down. A brilliant final round of 68 from Bob Charles. Only the one drop shot. A rash of birdies on the back nine. Three coming in the space of the last seven holes. My, my, what a finish. And there's still more to come. What high drama we've had on this glorious Sunday on Sky Sports and who knows, maybe a bit more to come. The reason we have the playoff a few moments ago on the 18th, we had Ian Stanley, a putt for a birdie in the championship. The lane was perfect, at four and a half feet by. And Charles looking to seize his opportunity to try and get his putt in first. Stanley's a little too firm on the high side of the hole and that left the way clear for the Australian to take the title. He's hold out so beautifully all week. It didn't get enough of the left edge of the hole. A six for Stanley. And Charles tapping in for his par five and it leaves us well, the playoff, and it's going to be the 18th. It's 528 yards. And Bruce, I just wonder, will Charles take the same option with the driver? Will Stanley take the same option with the iron? It's a good question. Um, I think probably for Bob Charles, because he hit such a good shot. But, of course, he was one behind. Now he's all square playing the 18th, so that might change things. I must say, Munn's mind goes back to Southern Hills just over a month ago. <laughs> And the same sort of thing, three putts from nowhere. And it'll be interesting to see how Stanley performs because I felt I've never been a fan of the 18-hole playoff for the US Open the following day and all the disruption it causes. But I do think it was the overnight break that enabled him to recover. That's uh, Ratif Goosen to recover and come out and play his game the following day. Whereas, uh, as we've all said, that must have been a seismic shock for Ian Stanley to think, I five would have won. But we shall see. They're all made of very stern stuff. And Ian Stanley's a tough cookie. He's a strong man. He's won many times, particularly in his native Australia. <laughs> to give you some indication of just how difficult the 18th hole has been, there's been 130 bogeys, 34 doubles, and 17 others. I go first. Right. And it is a tail. I go first. Is that right? That is correct. Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> well, it's an Antipodean clash. <laughs> For the senior British Open. <laughs> For them, I have to say, down there, knowing them all quite well, this is a bit like England versus Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That comes the arm. It's that one shot difference. Change of tactics for Charles. And he must have the ascendancy in this playoff, I'm afraid. He must really have hammered Stanley's ideas. But anyway, it's still they have everything to play for. Must find the fairway. Oh. He doesn't like that. He's pushed it. And there's trouble over there. And he's going very lucky. He's, oh, no, he hasn't. He's gone in the bunker. Thought for a minute he'd stop short. And the difference of those few feet, 
I had all the difference in the world. If he'd stayed short, he could have got it right up the fairway and on in three. From there, I don't think, I doubt he can get on in three. Advantage, Stanley. Well, Ian Stanley must now find the fairway. Hopefully, he's chosen the club to do so. That's a beauty. He's drilled it low. It's got plenty of run in it. <laughs> it's a lovely simple golf swing, the one of Ian Stanley. The ball's quite a long way back in his stance because he wants to get a low trajectory. Right foot drawn a little farther back. That enables the right side to turn earlier into the golf swing. Up go the arms from 8 o'clock, turn of the shoulders, bring it back into line, and a beautifully square club face there. Now a question of using the leverage he's created. Left arm pulls the club into the back of the ball. Left side clears and the right side applies the power. Just look at that taking off, just like a tracer bullet right up the centre of the fairway. But he was there before and he didn't manage to make a part. Still a lot of trouble ahead of him. But you're right, he's actually he's treading the same route as he's done before, so he knows the clubs, he knows what he wants to do, and well, it was a slight rush of blood to the head at the end. Financially, it's, well, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because they want the title, they want the Senior British Open Championship, which I'm sure very soon will become a major. All the four majors are in the United States. They have the PGA in the Open. They have the Ford Senior Players championship as well and all of these three I think are okay there has to be a question whether the tradition should be a major championship surely this one would be and if there was no tournament in the States on the week of this I'm sure you'd get many more Americans you'd get a more international field and I think that's what the promoters and the organizers are looking for it's been lovely to have the big three of golf here this week I just wonder how many of you at home and how many sitting in that stand there began the game of golf because of that television series way back in the 60s when we had player Palmer and Nicholas. I can't remember what evening it was on, but I remember being ready at the television half an hour before the tee-off time. Bob Charles has absolutely no choice here but to pitch this ball out to somewhere near Ian Stanley's. Strange choice of club for Charles after hitting that driver so well. I don't know what you and Bruce would think about that, but it seemed like he owned the 18th hole for a few moments. Well, we ruminated about it before. He, would he go again? And he might have done as he hit such a good shot, but it was, well, trying to avoid something like this that made him be more cautious. As Howard was saying, all he could do is sort of fluff it out there. It's a a good recovery, but no chance of getting home in three, wherever the wind is from. Which has gone back, I sense, Howard, to roughly where it was earlier in the week. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing. It changed as they were playing the, the last hole of regulation play, and it's almost to nothing at the moment. There's a little wind gauge quite close to me, and it's hardly making a move. I wish my electricity meter at home moved as slowly as that. <laughs> Howard, I'm just looking at the cut in the centre of the fairway. Stanley looks like he's about nine inches onto the cut on the right-hand side. It's a cracking T-shirt. <laughs> it's a good job he didn't hit it a little bit further right. He'd have been in the divot from the last time round. Who used to do that? Was it Hagen? Hogan. Hogan, was it? I believe it was the par 5 6 up at Carnoustie. 1953 Open, a year in which Ben Hogan won the three major championships. Didn't play in the final one because he couldn't get home in time. Things have changed a little since then. The referee with this match, Ewan, has said that Ian Stanley is away, so he'll be playing his second shot before Charles plays his third shot. Well, it looks OK. That end. Probably, I think, looking for the green patch he was on. About ten yards short of where he was with the other one. 192 to that trap, first one, Bob. Bye-bye. Yeah. I'm sure of it. 
Third shot, and really the best place that you could possibly place Bob Charles's ball is somewhere on, on the fairway near to that of Stanley. Stanley is in, in fact about 12 feet left of where he was on the 72nd hole. So you'll know the club is just about right. That's come quite a long way left. It bounces back off the bank. He throws line. That's a little further up. But he's played one more. That's a championship that's had just about everything. The only thing we haven't had is the defending champion here. Here's a message from Christie. Sunday's going to be a very, very disappointing day for me. Uh, there's one place I would love to have been is coming down that 18th hole, uh, Royal County down, maybe needing a par or even a birdie to tie or win the tournament. Uh, it's going to be very, very sad for me not to be there. It's one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Um, I would have been one of the first, the first, I think, to win it three times in a row. Uh, my God, it's going to be heartbreaking to really watch it. Well, I, I don't know if heartbreaking's the word for us, Christy. It's been heart-stopping for sure, the finish we've had. And the reason Christy not here, he had an accident with a bike he was cleaning, a motorbike that is, earlier in the season, and it fell and broke his leg in two places. And he actually has 12 pins and a couple of bolts in there. And he's hoping to be back in action next January. So it's been a pretty serious injury. And what a pity we haven't had him here. There was joyous scenes on this 18th, 12 months ago, when he had a final round of 68 to beat John Bland by two. And John Bland also edged into second place at the Royal Port Rush the year before that, O'Connor Jr., after a first round of 76, 69, 68, and 69. And I'm sure everyone across this lovely country, and indeed everyone who follows seniors golf, which is Christie a full and speedy recovery. Well, in all the excitement, I got the yardage totally wrong there, but Ian Stanley's a lot further back. He's 146 yards from the flag stick on this occasion. Trying to coax an eight iron forward. Has to be accurate. You can see the anxiety in his face as that took off. It was always left, but he got a nice bounce in. Got an uphill putt. And he's one less, going to be there, one less than his opponent. Twenty-five yards closer, 121 for Charles, just 99 to the front. Just a very small target now, but he has to aim at the flag, doesn't he? Just a wedge. bit of difficulty just seeing the flag with the gallery in the background. It's right on the right-hand circles of MasterCard. <laughs> well, at least Paul Stanley will know what he's got to do. must be that two putts will be sufficient. He has an amazing record in this championship, Bob Charles. He's hardly ever been outside the top eight. Ian Stanley, a winner in Germany last year. And once again this year at Carden Park, the golf course designed by Jack Nicholas up in the northwest, far away from Chester. And you can see, I think, in years gone by, what an open championship would have looked like at Royal County Down.
tell what the weather's been like over the last fortnight or so here. We've enjoyed nice warm sunshine, some rosy faces in the gallery. Both players will have similar lines for their putts. First Charles to go. And at least Ian Stanley will know what he has to do. Regardless, he has a putt to win outright, does Ian Stanley. But this should make it very difficult. If Bob can pop this one in. Just outside the right lip, uphill all the way. legs, not quite the line, and the tee shot, and you'll wonder, and he reflects this evening, I think, well, maybe I should have had a driver the second time, but totally understandable what he was trying to do. He was chasing Stanley first time around, second time around he with the honour, he was just trying to put it on the fairway. Two to win. Well, I can't believe this is such an easy chance to win again, and Ian won't be able to believe it either. But he's got it to do now, two putts, and I hope he doesn't try and charge this one. I don't think he will. Just outside the right lip. It looks better this time. performance at County Down from Ian Stanley. What a golden summer it's turning out to be. PGA champion in June and on this final weekend in July, the talented Australian is crowned senior British Open champion. Consolation for Sir Bob Charles, second place, runners-up place. He's been there a few times before and he also wins the Fred Daly Trophy for the best over 65. Fred Daly, who won the Open Championship 16 years before he did. Now, what's he looking for now? <laughs> Probably Mrs. Sandley, I would think, Pam. Lovely moment. Jack Nicklaus waiting behind the green there to offer his congratulations to both players. The only two players that finished ahead of him. But my, it was a nervy ending. And I think he's found it, Bruce. Go. Certainly his biggest win in the senior ranks and probably if you pick it across uh, all of his golfing career, the biggest win of his life. Certainly the biggest names in the field and it's the top championship undoubtedly of the European Seniors Tour. He had to survive a nail-biting end to regulation play. That's the 72nd hole. He'd raced his birdie putt some four feet by. Charles then missed his, which meant he had a putt to take the championship. Howard Clark told us it was the straightest putt on the green, and indeed it was, only Ian thought it came from the left. Nothing wrong with the stroke. And one felt the weight of the ball would have found its way down to the bottom of the cup. But that took us into extra holes. Charles confidently knocking his 18-incher in for a par five. And that left him tied at six under par. And so it was on to the 18th once again, the 73rd hole. 
poor tee shot from Charles left him no chance of reaching the green in three. This time needing two putts for victory. Not quite so aggressive as first time round. A lot easier, of course, up the slope. And any putt of over a foot surely can't be easy to win a championship of this nature. the way it all unfolded an emotional few moments for Ian Stanley and he's now got himself back together again and he's got himself alongside Howard Clark I don't know if I don't know if you quite got your thoughts together yet Ian but that was an exciting day and so many turning points well just having and flying with Bob and you knew as soon as he got on a green he had a great chance of holding his putt because he putted beautifully and um, and so did I until I got to the last and I was thinking of, like, Retief Goosen. <laughs> no, no, no. So then we got back to the tee. We hurried back to the playoff tee, and I said to my caddy, let's regroup and think positive, and uh, here we are. Great. Well, I personally think you ought to go back to the 17th and lift that little stake out I of the ground. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I was told on good authority that it saved the ball from going in the hazard. That was just one of the turning points. Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> the turning point of the tents when the, the ball ran through the bunker and or by yeah, the bunker. And we had lot, lots of things flying, and it's just... Just one of those weeks when you have everything going for you. I putted so well all week and then to get to the last. But that stake on 17, that's going in my golf bag. I'm taking it home. <laughs> <laughs> and Pam, your wife, she must be very pleased. I saw her on the 18th for the first playoff hole and she was too nervous to get anywhere close. Yeah, she's a bundle of nerves. Uh, <laughs> Pam came over last week and she'll be here in Europe for a couple of months and my kid's back home. Beautiful. So it is the title. It's one of the titles you wanted, the British Senior mm. Open champion. Congratulations. Thanks, Howard. Appreciate it. Well done. Cheers. A very worthy champion that Ian Stanley is to winner of the Senior British Open presented by Mastercard. And all the, the joys of getting the trophy will go on there very shortly. It's our third week in Ireland in the space of five weeks and we thank you. It's been wonderful.